Back in 1980, Georgia stormed through the regular season with a perfect record of 11-0. Not long after beating Georgia Tech 38-20 in Sanford Stadium, they learned they'd played Notre Dame for a national championship. The 1981 Sugar Bowl was at the five-year-old Superdome in New Orleans. You realize we're here to play football. We're not here to enjoy New Orleans, which we want to enjoy New Orleans. But in the back of your mind, you're going, we're here to play football. And that was our mindset. It was, it was kind of like a business trip. A business trip unlike any Georgia had ever seen or seen since. Jeff Harper grew up in Macon and played high school football at Monroe Academy. In 1980, his senior year at Georgia, he was the Bulldogs' starting left tackle on an often overlooked offensive line. We were better than a lot of people think. And, you know, they can call you overachievers or whatever, but there was talent there. And uh, then you look at Herschel. Well, Herschel, I think, will be the first one to tell you. Uh, I don't care how good you are, if you don't have a hole to run through, you're not going to go very far. The game plan that season, give Herschel the football. It was no different when the Dogs and Fighting Irish met on that January day in New Orleans. You don't change anything that got you there. Let's keep doing what we're doing. But a lot of people don't realize in the early part of the game, Herschel got his shoulder separated. And when he got his shoulder hurt, Early in the game, I thought, oh my God, we're not going to win. But he wanted to play. He goes over to the sideline and he tells you how tough he is and what a competitor he is. They pop it back in place and he comes back out. Not only did he go back out, he finished with 150 rushing yards and two touchdowns. The most memorable score, his leap in the second quarter that gave the dogs the lead for good. You know, I remember Herschel going over to the top. Him not going straight forward, going over all of these players and scoring. I mean, we just all went bonkers. It was, it was tremendous. It's hard to look past Herschel's performance, but there were other moments worthy of praise, like that kickoff that set up that over-the-top touchdown. The kickoff, you know, how many times have you seen where somebody kicks off, we kick off, and nobody feels the ball? Nobody feels the ball. How does that happen? 17 10, the final score that day at the Superdome. And after the game, Harper did have a little fun. I had to block a guy named Scott Zedick. And Scott was a great football player. And uh, he was 6'5, 6'6, 270. And I'm, you know, I'm 6'3. And at the time, I weighed about 242. And I'm playing left tackle. And uh, so I got my hands full with Scott all day. He's a great football player. After the ball game, he wants to trade jerseys. He says, I want to give you my Notre Dame jersey and let me have your Georgia jersey. And uh, my, my, my whole thought was, and my mentality was, I said, partner, I said, this is a national championship jersey. I said, your jersey's not worth anything to me. That priceless jersey now hangs in his office, a constant reminder of that unbeaten season. On campus, a bronze statue of Harper and a teammate carrying Vince Dooley off the field after finishing the regular season 11-0. Nobody picked us to win the national championship that year, but I look back on it and just think, you know, right place, right time. Uh, you know, wherever I go, whatever I do, uh, I've always, somehow or another, he played at Georgia, he played on the national championship football team. It could be a lot worse. I could be Herschel Walker. <laughs> It is a good thing Herschel Walker did go back in that day. The dogs completed just one pass. Buck Ballou connecting with Amp Arnold in the fourth quarter to seal the championship win. Jeff Harper is the proud owner and operator of Capital City Stucco in Metro Atlanta. His company celebrating its 30th anniversary this year.